Today we're going to discuss the Lost Ten Tribes and when they are going to return. The Gathering of Israel began in 1830 as the True Jesus Christ was restored through Joseph Smith. This specific day was marked by a sign in the heavens as recorded in Revelation 12. If you haven't watched it already, there is a video that talks in length about that, and I'll try to put the link up here for you. So we're here and nearing the end of the times of the Gentiles, and there's in fact another video just on the times of the Gentiles as well, so you may want to look at that. So when will the ten tribes return? Before we can answer that, most of us need to understand who the lost ten tribes are. Most LDS haven't thought about this very much. And do you realize that the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh are two of the lost ten tribes? Now think about that for a second. What does your patriarchal blessing say? And which tribe are you in? Have you thought about that? That you are likely part of the lost ten tribes? It's true. But we are getting way ahead of ourselves. To understand this, we need to go back and first understand Abraham's family tree. Thus, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. The story of Abraham starts in Genesis 11, which means the whole Garden of Eden, the fall, Cain and Abel, and then all the way down to Enoch, and then again all the way down to Noah and the flood, and then all the way down to Abraham, all contained in the first 10 chapters of Genesis. Think about that. The first 2,000 years of our history, a full one-third of our total history is in just 10 chapters in Genesis. But I digress. When we get to Abraham, we are not going to focus on Hagar, who is a concubinical wife, who Sarah offered to Abraham because she couldn't have any children. The Muslims that live in the Middle East are from this line. But we aren't going to talk about that today. Nor are we going to talk about Keturah, the line that Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, comes from. Some people wonder where Moses got the priesthood. Well, it's from Jethro, who is not part of the family of Israel, but did have the priesthood. Today, we are focused on the tribes of Israel, which are from Abraham and Sarah, who had Isaac. And Isaac married Rebekah, and they had Jacob, whose name was later changed to Israel. Israel had 12 sons from two wives and two concubines. Leah was the first wife, and Reuben is the oldest child. Joseph is the 11th child, and yet Joseph gets the birthright. Yes, this is the coat of many colors, Joseph, and the Joseph that interpreted Pharaoh's dream. Joseph has two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And yep, that's right. Manasseh is older than Ephraim, even though we usually say Ephraim and Manasseh. But again, Ephraim gets the birthright. I'll have to do a video on birthright sometime. The reason Joseph gets the birthright is because Reuben sneaks into Bilhah's chamber one night and as a result loses the birthright. But birthright is not about birth order. The birthright goes to the oldest child of the second wife if the first child of the first wife loses it. Rachel is the second wife. And since Bilhah and Zilpah are concubinical wives, Rachel's firstborn is Joseph, who gains the birthright even though he was born 11th in order out of 12 children. Without going into too much detail, the birthright blessing came with a double portion. In other words, you get twice as much as another brother. This was granted because this came with the responsibility to take care of your mother and any unmarried sisters. This is important because the 12 tribes of Israel do not exactly match the 12 sons of Israel. Here's what I mean. The difference is that Levi isn't given an inheritance of land like the others. He makes his fortune selling jeans. Just kidding. But later, as the Israelites conquer the land of Canaan, the Levites are given the responsibility of the priesthood in maintaining the temple and performing temple ordinances. Therefore, they are given a city inside each of the other 12 lands. So there is no tribe of Levi. And because Joseph has the birthright and is given a double portion, his two sons each have their own lands and tribes. So there isn't a tribe of Joseph, but rather a tribe of Ephraim and a tribe of Manasseh. So that's how we get the 12 tribes of Israel, which is different than the 12 sons of Israel. Here is the land regions assigned to each of the 12 tribes after they have conquered the land of Canaan, which is Palestine. After the exodus with Moses and after the 40 years wandering in the desert, 
So Abraham lived about 2000 BC. Moses led the Exodus around 1300 BC. The tribes lived under a government of judges for 334 years, and then under the kingship of Saul, David, and then Solomon for another 120 years before the land was divided into the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah in 975 BC. As you can imagine, going this fast through history, we're leaving out a lot of detail and a lot of context, so I apologize. The kingdom of Israel encompassed 10 of the tribes under the rule of Jeroboam. And the kingdom of Judah, which also encompassed the greater part of the tribe of Benjamin and all of the tribe of Judah, was under the rule of Rehoboam, who was King Solomon's son. The kingdom of Judah was to the south and included Jerusalem, while the kingdom of Israel was to the north. In 721 BC, the Assyrians completed their conquest of the kingdom of Israel, which included all of the northern ten tribes. The Assyrians took the ten tribes into the north and transplanted other people into Samaria and the surrounding areas. These new Samaritans, as they were called, developed a hybrid religion that the Jews did not like, and they treated them as lesser individuals all the way down and through the time of Christ. It is believed that the Assyrians captured and transplanted hundreds of thousands of people from the ten tribes. It was their custom to take the most intelligent, skilled, and influential people while leaving the poor and uneducated. The deportation of the ten tribes happened in phases and into many different areas. The Israelites eventually escaped. Many historians believe this happened when the Assyrian Empire fell. Precisely where the tribes journeyed after the fall of Assyria is another unknown, even as it is unknown to Judah where Lehi and Mulek went. Scripture makes it clear that there will be a distinct remnant that's going to remain in the land to the north. But at the same time, the Lord states that many will be scattered among all nations. This is how the ten tribes become lost. They are lost according to the records of the Jews. So which tribe are you? If you're watching this video, you are likely Ephraim or maybe Manasseh. At least that's what it probably says in your patriarchal blessing. Now think about that for a minute. Judah and Benjamin are the two tribes that are not lost. So if you are from any tribe other than Judah or Benjamin, you are from one of the lost 10 tribes. Now wait, you haven't ever heard this before. This sounds weird. The lost 10 tribes are hidden somewhere and they're going to come back as a whole group sometime in the future. Well, this is true of a remnant of the lost 10 tribes that stay in the North countries. Doctrine and Covenants 133 makes it very clear that they shall return as a group, and based on the timeline, it will likely happen shortly after the millennium begins. So how do we know this? The key is in verse 33, and they shall be filled with songs of everlasting joy. This phrase appears in many other places in conjunction with the second coming. Many of these scripture verses talk about when the remnant of the lost ten tribes will return and come to Zion with songs of everlasting joy shortly after being redeemed by Christ after his second coming. Many of them also say the righteous shall be gathered out from among all nations and shall come to Zion singing with songs of everlasting joy. Your patriarchal blessing makes it clear that you have been gathered early as part of the return of the lost ten tribes. This is the gathering of Israel. But how does that actually work? Am I a literal descendant of Ephraim, or was I just adopted into the house of Israel? Here is the answer. It is mathematically, statistically, and genetically almost certain that you are a literal descendant of the person listed in your patriarchal blessing. In fact, it's almost 100% likely that you are from all 12 tribes of Israel. So how is that possible? Let me illustrate. Here you are. You were born of a mother and a father, and each of them had two parents as well, and each of them had two parents and so forth. So if your parents' generation is one above you, that is two people. Two generations back is four people. Three generations back is eight people, and you get the idea. At seven generations back, you are from 128 people. At seven generations back, you have made it to Joseph Smith's time. Let's keep going. Back nine generations, we are at the Revolutionary War. 13 generations is Shakespeare. 15 generations is Christopher Columbus. At 19 generations back, 
you're at the Black Plague, where your direct ancestry is made up of about 524,000 people. But going back further, the numbers kind of get out of control. Going back a total of 30 generations, you come from 1 billion people. That is only 1,000 years ago. But there is a very big flaw in all of this logic. There is a huge problem with this math. Do you know what it is? The problem is that if you go back 30 generations to 1000 AD, there was an estimated worldwide population of 345 million people. So how do you come from over a billion people? Now imagine what the math would be if you go back to the time of Christ. And what if you went back all the way to the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Can you now see why mathematically, genetically, and statistically, you are from all 12 tribes of Israel? Well, as you can imagine, there is a whole lot of overlap in your family tree, sometimes closer than we would like to admit. But the point is, you are from far more people than you would imagine. You genetically come from nearly everyone, unless your parents are both from a remote part of Africa or Asia with a pure line back from before Israel, which is extraordinarily unlikely. You are probably from all 12 tribes of Israel. So if you're from all 12 tribes, why is only one called out in your patriarchal blessing? The prophet, President Nelson, gave us this answer in the July 2014 Enzyme where he said, quote, we need to gain that heavenly perspective. We need to know about the Abrahamic covenant and understand our responsibility in helping to bring about the promised gathering of Israel. We need to know why we are privileged to receive patriarchal blessings and learn of our connection to our ancient patriarchs. We need to know that Jacob's son, Joseph, became the birthright son after Reuben lost his birthright. Joseph and his sons Ephraim and Manasseh became the seed to lead in the gathering of Israel. Other tribes were to follow. See, this is the key. He says we need this heavenly perspective so we can know our calling and responsibility. If you are of the tribe of Ephraim or Manasseh, your calling is to lead the gathering of Israel, which includes the lost ten tribes of which you are a part. The guide to the scripture says this about Ephraim. Ephraim was given the birthright in Israel. In the last days, their privilege and responsibility is to bear the priesthood, take the message of the restored gospel to the world, and raise an ensign to gather scattered Israel. The children of Ephraim will crown with glory those from the north countries who return in the last days. I believe this means that Ephraim will have the privilege of helping the ten tribes with their temple covenants. Ephraim will also have a leadership role in uniting all of the tribes of Israel. In the guide to the scriptures regarding Manasseh, it says, In the last days, the tribe of Manasseh will assist the tribe of Ephraim in gathering scattered Israel. What about the other tribes? Well, each has a special calling and responsibility in the last days. The various tribes will be gathered to their respective lands of promise. For Judah, that will be Jerusalem. For other tribes, that will be Zion the new Jerusalem in the Americas. But if the gathering of the Gentiles includes the lost 10 tribes, wouldn't there be members of the church that have a different tribe identified in their patriarchal blessing? Well, yes, they would. And yes, we have. Listen to this account Wendy Nielsen, the prophet's wife, gave about an experience she and the prophet had in Russia in June of 2013, while she was speaking to 100 Russian sister missionaries. She says, when I stepped to the pulpit to speak, I found myself saying something I'd never anticipated. I said to the women, I'd like to get to know you by lineage. Please stand up as the tribe of Israel that represents the lineage declared in your patriarchal blessing is spoken. Benjamin, a couple women stood. Dan, a couple more. Reuben, a few more stood. Naphtali, more stood and the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were announced from Asher to Zebulun. And as the women stood, we were all amazed with what we were witnessing, feeling, and learning. How many of the 12 tribes of Israel do you think were represented in that small gathering of fewer than 100 women on that Saturday in Moscow? 11. 11 of the 12 tribes of Israel were represented in that one room. The 10 tribes are being found. 
Members of these tribes are finding others in their own tribes as well as those in other tribes. Now don't get this confused with a specific event that will likely happen at the beginning of the millennium regarding the formal return of the lost 10 tribes from the north, which is a specific group that will return and bring their quote, rich treasures unto the children of Ephraim, which we believe will be their own scriptures with the account of when Christ visited them after he visited the Nephites. Remember the timing of the gathering of Israel began with the restoration of the gospel, but quote, will not be complete until the second coming of the savior and on into the millennium. This will be such an amazing event that according to Jeremiah, we will no longer talk about Moses and the Exodus because this will be so much more spectacular. So when will the lost 10 tribes return? Well, they have returned and you're part of them, but they will continue to return even into the millennium as those in the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh work to gather them.